Thank you very much for the invitation. It's really great pleasure for me to be here and share uh, our research uh, with you. Um, once again, my name is Katarina Klingova. I'm from Globsec. Um, and today I'm going to be talking and presenting you our latest public opinion polls. I have a presentation, so I'm going to uh, share my screen um, because I think that when you visualize data, it's easier to have them in charts. Uh, than to talk abstractly about it. So I'm going to share my screen. So uh, the title of my presentation is Globsec Trends 2021, Central Europe, Central and Eastern Europe, one year into the pandemic. Uh, this is the title also of our latest uh, report connected to our uh, latest public opinion polls. We've been conducting specific public opinion polls and then producing reports, which we called uh, Globsec trends since 2016. We started with three countries, Slovakia, um, Czech Republic, and Hungary. And for the past two years, we were very lucky uh, for the opportunity to do public opinion polls in 10 Central and Eastern European countries. So we get the nice regional overview. Um, um, our latest research is uh, Globsec Trends. Um, it's a public opinion poll conducted via CATI um, collection method uh, due to the pandemic. Otherwise, it will be in person. Um, Ten countries, the data was collected in March. Uh, it is a representative sample of one, at least 1,000 respondents per country. I'm saying 1,000 at least because it, it differs a bit, you know, in some countries like 1,003 Summary is on 1,005, uh, but it's the basis is 1,000. Um, the data is not collected by us, but respective public opinion uh, polling agencies. And in case of Hungary, it was IMAS. Um, the topics I'm going to be talking about can be divided into several areas, um, media, geopolitics, perceptions of friends and foes, um, trust uh, in institutions and COVID and uh, democracy. I'm going to start with media. Um, in the latest public opinion polls in March, we found out that uh, the perception in Central and Eastern Europe uh, really uh, follow the global trends. Uh, and this means that the trust in media is decreasing uh, not only in the world, but in, in Central and Eastern Europe. In seven out of 10 countries, we've been conducting the polling. The distress in media has increased uh, from 50% in March 2020 to uh, 58% in March 2021. Um, in case of Hungary, um, uh, actually Hungary is leading this uh, distrust, let's say, uh, uh, in media among the um, in the countries we did the uh, analysis. Uh, the distress in media increased in Hungary from 55% in March uh, 2020 to 69% in March uh, 2021. Um, when we asked a year before questions on why, you know, people distrust media, and we found out that 64% uh, of respondents of, of, of respondents in Hungary believe that. Uh, government has a huge influence um, on the independence of media. And this is also a factor that Hungary is leading in when we compare uh, these findings to the findings in other nine countries. We did the polling in a year ago. Um, when we inquired this year uh, on social media because of their rising importance and the need to eventually regulate them. We found out that 55% of Central and Eastern European think and wish for a stronger regulation of social media. These perceptions are being led by Austria with 74%, Slovakia with 71%, and Czechia with 61%. In case of Hungary, uh, 54 respondents in Hungary said that they would um, prefer and want uh, social media to be more strictly regulated by laws and rules. So this is um, this was an overview of what we found when it comes to media. Uh, let's move to geopolitics. Um, when it comes to um, geopolitics or Eastern and Western orientation of Central mm -hmm. and Eastern European, we found out that actually majority of Central and Eastern European in particular, uh, well, most of the Central and Eastern European, in particular 49% of them, 
uh, want to be stationed and want their country to be um, stationed somewhere uh, geopolitically between the West and the East. Um, yes, they belong to the European Union, they belong to the NATO, but uh, they do not feel themselves to be part of these um, Western entities completely, and they would seek for their own central and East central European, let's say, identity or niche. Um, and um, Hungary is actually a perfect example of it because it leads uh, this uh, preference for the in-betweenness among the Central and Eastern European countries with 59% and only 32% um, of uh, Hungarian respondents uh, declared in March that they would like their country to be more um, oriented towards West, to be part of the West. Um, on this chart, we can see the uh, slow decline of the Western uh, orientation of the country among the Hungarian respondents and eventually increase of uh, the preference uh, for this in-between uh, geopolitical orientation of, of, of Hungary. And for example, I mean, this increase in in, in between preference uh, has increased uh, in the past four years in Hungary by 12 percentage points, uh, which is quite significant trend. However, um, European Union and membership of the European Union is not disputed uh, by Central and Eastern Europeans. On average, 78% uh, support uh, the membership of the country in the European Union. Um, so it's this trend is, is stable, is, is uh, strong. However, uh, at the same time, we observe that certain part of uh, social groups, uh, certain parts of societies in various countries uh, still lack information about how the European Union functions, what does it stand for, or who is... Uh, the leading uh, rep who are the leading representatives of central of the European Union, and this is possible to observe uh, on a question uh, when we ask, you know, how do you perceive uh, Ursula von der Leyen, the president of the European uh, Commission? Thirty-two uh, percent of Central and Eastern European declared that they never heard of uh, or do not know who she is. Uh, this is actually, the number is uh, quite lower in comparison uh, to the question and our findings when we asked uh, about um, Commissioner uh, Juncker, uh, but, uh, the, well, President of the European Commission Juncker a few years ago. So uh, Ursula von der Leyen is um, much more beloved and uh, more people know about her than uh, the former President of the European Commission. Um when it comes to NATO, similar to the European Union, 73% uh, of Central and Eastern European uh, support uh, membership of their country uh, in NATO. However, once again, 36% um, of Central and Eastern Europeans believe, for example, uh, some of the disinformation narratives that are being spread uh, about NATO, that um, in this case, NATO is an organization and a tool for the United States to control other countries. Um, and um, one thing that we've observed throughout the years is that a lot of Central and Eastern Europeans believe various disinformation narratives um, that um, sway their perceptions and that create dichotomies uh, among their perceptions and beliefs. Uh, this is possible to observe on this chart um, when uh, we ask Central and Eastern Europeans you know, who is their uh, foe, who is their friend, well, we see on this chart that there is a huge difference on whom Central and Eastern European perceive as a threat and whom not. Um, uh, on this chart, we see that 68% of Polish people, Polish respondents, think that Russia is a threat uh, to their country, while only 3% of Bulgarians uh, think similarly. Uh, and on the other hand, uh, Slovakia is leading with 36% perception that it is the United States that poses a threat to yeah. their country in comparison to 10% uh, of, of uh, similar, um, similar perceptions in Poland. So we see Hungary is somewhere in between. 
Um, when we asked the question on um, strategic partners, um, most important strategic partners uh, of country, uh, and the respondents had uh, an opportunity to select two out of the, uh, I think it was six countries. Um, Germany uh, was the most commonly um, named um, strategic partner in Central and Eastern Europe. Um, 57 percent uh, of Central and Eastern European perceive uh, Germany as their key uh, strategic partner uh, in the region. And Angela Merkel, uh, with 62 percent, was the most popular, uh, you know, global leader <laughs> uh, in in Central Europe, uh, despite of the fact, I mean, that she was leaving. Uh, so um, we'll see who's going to be. You know how how new leadership in Germany is going to uh, stand and be perceived by Central and Eastern Europeans next year when we hope to continue uh, and repeat uh, our polling. When we look more closely at this uh, at this perception of strategic partnership, we see that there are huge differences even among V uh, four countries. Uh, Poland, along with uh, Romania, is are one of the two countries uh, uh, where United States uh, is perceived by respondents as more, more important strategic partner than, um, than Germany. Um, so the, in this case, Poland and Romania uh, are outliers. Uh, but an interesting insight is also Hungary, uh, where more people, you know, 35% of respondents uh, for Russia, 30% for China, perceive these countries uh, as more important strategic partners than the United States or, for example, France with 5%. I mean, in, on this chart, you also see that 47% of Slovaks think that Russia is their, that is the most important partner for Slovakia. Yeah, but this is something that um, has and goes back to pan-Slavic tradition which is very popular amongst Slovakia as a pan-Slavic country uh, and a narrative that is being reinforced repeatedly and throughout the history uh, by various actors, including the Kremlin. Um, but it's inter interesting to see that Hungary, despite of the fact that it is not a pan-Slavic country, um, it's slowly gaining uh, on, on uh, on Slovakia with this pro-Kremlin attitudes and perceptions that Russia and China uh, um, are most important strategic partners for the country uh, in the region. Um, when we look at the uh, leaders um, and perceptions of, of leaders as President Biden and, and President Vladimir Putin, we see that um, in perception and positive perceptions, Joe Biden uh, beats of Vladimir Putin uh, 53% to 35% well, in, in the region. Uh, when we look closely on Hungary, it is interesting to see that both of these leaders received um, similar preference or similar positive perception from uh, Hungarian uh, respondents. When we look closely, we see that in Czechia, Joe Biden clearly leads over Vladimir Putin with uh, 63% over 24%. Similarly, um, Joe Biden, you know, wins uh, and is much more popular in, in Poland than Vladimir Putin in Slovakia, which is, again, uh, interesting uh, country with pan-Slavic connections. It, it is interesting to see that Joe Biden, despite of the fact that uh, when we conducted this polling, he was only, you know, a few weeks, few months in the office, he was able to beat uh, Vladimir Putin, who is a stable leader and has been for many years perceived very positively by Slovaks. Um, he wins by, you know, here by 1%, but I think that it's a huge accomplishment uh, when it comes to perceptions of Slovaks. Um, and in Hungary, you know, 42% for both of these uh, global leaders. Uh, when it comes to China, uh, we pulled several questions on China. And one of the things uh, we found out and key, one of the big key findings, we found out that um, Central and Eastern Europeans do not actually have a lot of knowledge about 
um, China, and to a certain level, it shapes their perceptions of um, of you know possible co- collaboration with of their country with China, uh, or they have a bit of a misunderstanding uh, about China itself. Um, but what we found out is that uh, on average, sixteen percent of Central and Eastern European perceive Chinese President Xi Jinping. I don't know whether I pronounce that pronoun- correctly. Uh, positively, uh, in Hungary, it's 22%, uh, which is the second most positive perception um, from the analyzed countries after Latvia with 50, uh, 22%. Uh, however, um, I mean, uh, 50 on average, 56% or, you know, 48% in Hungary do not know or never heard about him. So uh, despite the fact that China is really a global power, uh, Central and Eastern Europeans really do not know a lot of things about it, including who is in charge of this global power. Um, despite of the fact that the Central and Eastern Europeans do not have a lot of information about China, um, some of them um, in, in some countries, significant parts of uh, the population think that Chinese regime could be an inspiration for their countries. Such perceptions are led in Romania um, by 30%, in Bulgaria, 25% of, of um, Bulgarian respondents think that Chinese regime could be an inspiration for their country, while, uh, again, 27% of Bulgarians do not know. Um, yeah, in Hungary, it is 17% uh, that would like to, well, they would like uh, Hungarian form of government to resemble uh, and be inspired by Chinese regime, and 12% of Hungarians do not know. Um, while um, Central and Eastern Europeans do not really have a lot of information about uh, the the government or how what what about domestic issues in Hungary, um, they think that uh, well, 63% of Hungarian respondents think and agree that human rights in China are systematically violated. In general, another thing that we observed is that Central and Eastern Europeans, while they say they do not know a lot of things, they're very cautious about violations of human rights. And we think that this is closely connected to their own experience of um, communist regime and uh, violations of human rights that have been happening in this region for for, um, decades. on the other other side, um, in Hungary, only forty six percent of respondents are worried about Chinese economic power. General perception is that uh, China is perceived as a country or superpower that is far, far away, and Central and Eastern European countries are not perceived as um, countries of importance of such a big um, economic power. While at the same time, you know, 43% of Hungarians are not worried about it. So this indifference um, and perception that, you know, we're not important resonates not only among Hungarians, but uh, among Central Europeans as such. When it comes to democracy, we found some interesting findings. Um, We found out that um, you know, trust during the COVID-19 pandemic has been significantly influenced. Uh, in general, um, even before the uh, pandemic, um, we've observed huge distrust in public institutions um, ac- all across Central and Eastern Europe. And to certain levels, this distrust has even he has more increased um, by the pandemic. However, uh, with the pandemic, we saw the rise of new authorities. And on this chart, you see that uh, on average, um, 68% of uh, Central and Eastern uh, Europeans perceive and trust medical authorities and scientific uh, authorities as an important um, and trustful institutions in comparison to only 42% um, that trust their own government. So. Uh, new authorities and big um, important, well, not importance, but um, new authorities, but importance um, of distrust that can have, that can be crucial during the pandemic uh, when you need 
the citizens to follow uh, the policies, follow the direction of the government so that um, there could be less casualties um, and, and more lives can be saved. Um, but on this chart, we see that um, Hungary, in certain levels, it follows the, the uh, regional averages. In certain levels, it, uh, you know, surpasses um, the, 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 the regional average in the sense that, um, you know, 51% of Hungarian respondents trusted on um, their government in March. And uh, Hungary, in the sense, was one of only three countries where Central and Eastern Europeans trusted their own government. Um, this trust was possible to observe also in other question we asked. Uh, we asked the question, how do you think that your national government handled the COVID-19 pandemic? Uh, we asked this question in March. That means that uh, we were able to capture, you know, first and uh, the second wave of the pandemic. Uh, and on this chart, you see that Hungary was one of only two countries where majority of respondents trusted uh, their own government and thought that uh, their own government handled the pandemic well in comparison to, um, you know, <laughs> A majority of Central Europeans uh, thinking that their own governments did not handle the pandemic uh, well. Uh, such, um, you know, such negative perceptions uh, were being led by Slovakians, uh, where 75% of respondents uh, in March told us that they think that uh, Slovak government did not handle uh, the pandemic well. Um, when it comes to um, understanding and a perception of uh, democracy as a system based on equality, human rights and freedoms and rule of law um, and being perceived as a good system of government for their country, uh, we see that when you state this question in such a way, um, there is a huge support for democracy as a system of governments. Not only in Hungary, uh, which you know is equal to the regional average um, with 85%, um, but people want um, democracy uh, to be uh, you know governing system is governing. I'm sorry, I'm hearing something, so I don't know uh, what's that. So, um, but when we ask the same question and add liberal in front of democracy, meaning uh, we ask the question, liberal democracy as a system based on equality, human rights and freedoms and rule of law is good for my country, uh, we see a huge difference and a huge drop in preference of, of such system of governance. On average, it's 68%. Uh, in case of Hungary, 59% uh, of respondents would want liberal democracy uh, to be the system guiding uh, their country. Um, we believe, I mean, here on this chart, you see it more closely. Uh, Slovakia, the difference between the framing of these two questions in Slovakia is 28 countries, 28 uh, percentage points. In case of Hungary, you know, it's 26 percentage points. In Lithuania, it's uh, 20 percentage points. Um, we see that um, and we uh, talk about these findings in such a way that this is a result of a long-term smear campaign against um, liberal politicians, liberal policies, uh, liberal actors that has been... Um, you know, going on in Central and Eastern Europe for uh, several years now. And uh, here we have uh, proof of it that liberalism uh, is really being used as a smear word. And uh, a lot of people are very cautious about this word and we're very, let's say, a bit allergic on it if it's being used. Um, when we ask the question, um, independently of the previous question. These were like two separate questions. Um, so it was not either or. Um, on whether having a strong and decisive leader who does not have to bother with a parliament or elections in your 
or in my country, in your, in their countries, uh, in the countries of respondents, um, we found out that uh, more and more people prefer this kind of uh, uh, system of governance and, and strong, strong autocratic leader. Um, despite of the fact that in the previous question they said that uh, governance or democracy is a good system uh, and preferred system of governance for their country. Um, we found out basically that this autocratic tendencies have increased in five out of six, six countries. We did the polling both and asked the question both in uh, 2020 in October um, and it increased from 30% in October 2020 to 42% in March um, 2021. Um, one of the things that uh, we believe that strongly influences A, whether the perceptions of or negative perceptions of liberal democracy or the preference for a strong autocratic uh, leader uh, during the pandemic is um, good communication, good strategy communication of public institutions, but also uh, widespread um, believe in conspiracy theories and disinformation that are um, viral in in this region and that uh, are very much present on social media platforms in um, Central and Eastern European uh, countries. Um, this is possible to observe on uh, some of the, um, let's say, conspiracy theories or disinformation narratives about the COVID-19 we polled in March. Uh, we found out basically that one year in the pandemic, uh, still 28% of um, population across Central and Eastern Europe thought that um, COVID-19 pandemic is a planned operation to control the population. So uh, despite of the fact that so many people have died, not only in Slovakia, but in the world and in, in this region, uh, in the first or the second wave of the pandemic, people still thought that uh, COVID-19 was a planned operation. Um, when we look at uh, the average uh, of the conspiracy theories and disinformation narratives, we ran a uh, huge people, huge segment of populations uh, in this region are susceptible to these conspiracy theories and disinformation narratives. We see that this, um, let's say, negative uh, ranking is being led by, by, by Bulgaria with 40%, followed by 36% in Romania, 29% in in Slovakia and, you know, only 12% in Austria. Hungary is somewhere in lower half with uh, 20% of respondents believing in various uh, conspiracy theories and uh, disinformation about COVID-19. I believe that this is all for me.